Hey, what's up guys? Spencer Rhodes here, and these are my death predictions for the back half of Season 8 of The Walking Dead. Okay, so the season, the mid-season premiere of this season is in about nine days. Yeah, it's nine days away, so I thought this would be kind of a kind of an interesting thing to do. Um, every day I am going to release a new part of this, of this little mini-series that we have right here, and these are going to be my death predictions, and I'm going to be doing every main character, every, um, every supporting character, um, just pretty much everyone with a name, so it's going to be about 40, 45, 50 characters total, and I'm going to have about 10, 12 characters in each video, and it's going to be in a random order, and I'm going to do a scale of 1 to 10 on their chances of dying in this back half. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so number one, we have a big one here, it's Simon. Um, unfortunately... Yeah, I think he's pretty much a goner. It, it In the comics, neither Negan or Dwight die in All Out War. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say comic spoilers. If you, you do not want to know about anything that was that happens in the comics that the show might do, um, don't keep watching because um, I'm definitely doing comic spoilers. There's just no getting around that. But in the comics, in All Out War, both Negan and Dwight survive. And I can definitely tell that that is probably the direction that they are taking with the show because Dwight and Dwight and Negan's storylines are fairly similar to their comic counterparts. So, and this show has already infamously killed a lot of characters before their comic material got completely finished. So I feel like killing Dwight or Negan before their comic material got completely finished would be just another slap in the face. So unfortunately, I feel like Simon has to die just because he's he's pretty much the third big bad. They're pretty much the the top three um, major antagonists. Well, Dwight's not really an antagonist. He's pretty much I don't know more a morally gray character. I mean, he's done some bad things, but now he's trying to help. Um, so he's kind of a double agent. But I do believe that since Dwight and Negan pretty much have to survive to get the rest of their comic material, Simon has to be the one that dies. And they've already kind of set this up with Negan getting angry at Simon for backsliding, for doing things without permission, killing people without permission. Um, in the trailer, we see Simon pointing a gun at Tamuel, and then J Jad is crying, and she looks alone. So I think Simon has her entire group of people killed. Simon has all of the trash people killed, except for Jadis. So I think that's what, what Negan keeps getting mad about, Simon not following orders and killing people when, Simon, when Negan didn't order him to. And then there's the thing that happened last season where the Oceanside people talk about how all of the males that are 10 years old and older got killed. All of them, they got lined up and executed. And that didn't sound like something that Negan would want or order. So I'm thinking that's something that Simon ordered. So I think in this back half, we're going to have some drama between Simon and Negan. And Simon is going to become a more, of a, more of a villain, more of a big bad in this back half. And I think that will be what leads to his death. They have to kill someone. I would love to see Simon and Negan get locked up and just arguing with each other. Um, I love Stephen Ogg as an actor. I really do want Simon to just keep living. I don't even care if it makes sense. I just want more of Simon. But he's he's gone. He's dead. He's definitely dying. It's a 10 out of 10. I would say a 10 out of 10. Simon will die in the back half of season 8. Alright, next up we have Daryl. Um... Not yet. Not this season. Probably never. Daryl is probably going to be alive in season 15. I could be wrong, but I know for a fact, I know it in my heart, he's not going to die this year. He's not going to die in season 8. Season 9, uh, who knows, you know, maybe that'll be, that'll be a different story. I'll have a better handle on that when we get there, if, or at least if we get a trailer for season 9. Um, I might be able to really say whether or not Daryl will will pass on to the Angels, but he is not going anywhere this season. Um, 
I mean, for one thing, he survived Lucille, and I feel like, you know, Lucille was a good moment to kill Daryl. The introduction of Negan was a good moment to kill Daryl. It was the big part of the comics to this day, issue 100. And if Daryl was going to survive that, he would at least survive a few seasons after that. And quite frankly, his story is not over with him wanting to just kill everyone, with him just wanting to blow up the sanctuary, even when there's innocent families in the sanctuary. He's in a really dark place right now, and I think the back half will be about Daryl at some point finding the light and realizing that he is wrong. And I think that they're going to they're they're going to play that out a little more. There's there's a little more to do with Daryl as a character. There's just more to do with him. I think his story is unfinished. I think his 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 relationship with Carol, there's there's still some I don't think they're romantic, but I do think that Daryl and Carol are going to have a few more adventures before one of them get killed. And quite frankly, the, I mean they've they've killed off Carl pretty much they've they've killed off they've killed off Morales for fuck's sake and we pretty much know that Morgan is going to go to fear the walking dead so we're, we're pretty much losing 3 out of the 6 left of the season 1 characters in one season Morales and Carl died Morgan is prob probably traveling to fear the walking dead because I think it, it was confirmed somewhere that um it, it it is going to be a time jump so Morgan is alive he will survive all out war and he is traveling to Fear the Walking Dead. So the only season one characters we have left are Rick, Daryl, and Carol. So we better not lose any any of them this season. So Daryl, I say his chances of dying are 0 out of 10. Next up, we have Carl Grimes. This one is pretty definite. Carl is dying in a season premiere. We've seen bits and pieces in the trailer where Carl is giving Rick this dramatic dialogue. You, when you put away your gun, um, you were right. We, you guys have to go back to that. You have to go back to not fighting anymore. We've had this kind of forced storyline with Carl this season where he's just kind of this peaceful guy that wants to do the right thing and save everyone. He, last season, he was thirsty for blood. He wanted to wipe off the saviors from the face of the planet. And this season, all... All out of nowhere, he wants to just save everyone and do do the right thing. I think that's because between season seven and season eight, some decisions were made out of nowhere to kill off Carl. These decisions led to the decision to kill off Carl. So I think Carl is going to have some dramatic lines of dialogue about doing the right thing. He's going to give some dramatic speeches. Plus, there was the letter that we see Rick hold in the trailer for the back half. He's walking around outside and he's holding Carl's letter. These are bits and pieces that the trailer tells us. The trailer gives us these bits and pieces. We see that Carl's getting really, really sick in the trailer. His eyes are turning purple. Um, I know that some people are saying, well, maybe he's immune, or maybe it's not a, really a walker bite. It's a bite from something else. Um, it just, it wouldn't really explain why he looks so bad, why he he looks like he's infected. He looks like he has the fever. He's sweating, and his eyes are turning purple. Um, it, he's gone. He's dead. It just th they wouldn't want to risk the Glenn dumpster thing so closely after it already happened. It was such a controversial thing. Um, I don't think they would want to do it. And um, I, I really think that it's not a troll. They're not. They're not trying to trick us. Carl is dying. Carl is definitely dying in the mid-season premiere. So, um, I would say that his chances of dying are 10 out of 10. He's definitely dying like Simon. There is no way that he is making it out of Season 8 alive. Alright, so next up we have Enid. So, for Enid, I think that she will definitely survive. I think that she is safe. She kind of, I think she, she's going to get a little more importance now that Carl is dead. She's going to kind of fill that the teenage role, the the teenage survivor role that Carl had for a few a year a few years. Um, I I don't know really how they're how they're kind of doing the timeline. It, it's supposed to be like two years between seasons one and season eight, so Carl should really be like twelve years old. But um, I digress. Enid I think is going to fill the the teenager role. She is going to be the big teenage survivor now that Carl is dead. I think with Carl dead, she will be more important. 
Um, her story does not seem un her story does not seem finished. I believe that she has a lot more to do. She just killed the leader of Oceanside, so that should be some interesting development for her. I think that was her first human kill, and they set that up as far back as uh, the 15th episode of Season 7, where she almost killed the same person, the leader of the Oceanside. So I think with Judith, or no, not Judith, but with Enid, she, I mean, she and J Judith, I think, will get more importance with Carl's death. You know, they're, they're the young people that are still alive. And I think that with Enid, her big thing will be killing people, you know. She hasn't really killed anyone except for the person she just killed, the leader of the ocean side. Carl, on the other hand, has probably killed thousands of people. Not thousands, but hundreds of people. So with Enid, I think that when she finds out that Carl's dead and that she, she didn't even give a chance to say goodbye, she will be very upset and very angry. We saw in the trailer that her and Aaron were hugging. That might be why, that, that might be um, what she's upset about. I think that with Carl dead, she's going to be angry for a period of time. She's going to want revenge. She's going to fight the saviors and kill some saviors. And it's going to be very interesting character development with her. And, you know, with Sasha dead, Enid, Maggie, and Sasha, they kind of had that, that triangle of friendship last season. So I feel like... Maggie and Enid really need each other. Um, you know, Enid is losing Carl. That was kind of her romantic connection. So I think Maggie will be able to comfort Enid because she lost Glenn. I think that that is a storyline, a little bit of character development that will occur this season. I think that Enid has a lot more to do. I think in season nine, um, maybe she could be the one that meets Lydia. Maybe she and Lydia become friends or something. Uh, maybe it's completely a spin on the comics. Some people are saying Lydia won't exist because Carl will be dead. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I would like to still see Lydia exist. I want to see as much of A New Beginning in The Whisper of War just done from the comics as possible. It's such an excellent part of the comics. It's my favorite part of the comics. Pretty much everything after All at War is really good to me. I know some people have some issues, but I really like it, and I want to see it adapted very faithfully. And I want to see Lydia. I want to see Alpha. I want to see Beta. So I think having Enid maybe be the one that discovers Lydia or brings Lydia back, that, that would be really interesting. I, I do think that Enid definitely has some story left. We're going to explore uh, whether or not she will kill people, whether or not she wants to do the right thing. She's going to be doing a little ser soul searching. She's going to be growing up a little bit, coming into her own. So I say she will definitely make it to season nine, at least season nine. So for this season, she is safe. I give her chances of dying a zero out of ten. Okay, next up we have Scott. So <laughs> I said there would be a random order of the characters, and for those of you that don't know, <laughs> Scott is a person in The Walking Dead. He is a black guy. He is, I think he has said maybe 10 lines. He's kind of like T-Dog. He's the bald black guy in the background that doesn't do very much and doesn't talk very much, but he survives multiple seasons. Anyway, this is his third season in a row. In season six, he was the guy that got injured. I think he, something happened to his leg, but he had to get carried to uh, Alexandria, and Denise saved his life. And in real life, he's the husband of Sasha, the actress. It's just a little trivia there. I think that was what got him the job. But um, with this one, it's really difficult to say. I'd say it's I'd say it's a 50-50 shot because he's a background Alexandrian. He he doesn't have much of a story. He has survived almost 40 episodes. Actually, I think he has survived 40 episodes. Um, because, yeah, he was introduced at the very beginning of season six. So he's literally lasted 40 episodes, and he, he, he hasn't done very much, and he hasn't talked very much. Um, I, think there, I think he'll just get a throwaway death. He might be one of those characters that says something really heroic or really morally pure or does something really heroic, and then five seconds later he dies. They do that with a lot of characters a lot of times. Or he will just get killed like Francine did. He just kind of gets shot in the middle of a fight, and he's just kind of a casual uh, death of a minor character. I do believe the show needs that. I do believe the show needs minor character casualties. You can't give everyone a dramatic 
a dramatic last words like they did with Eric and with some other characters like they're doing with Carl and all that. I think Scott could be a character that could just kind of get his head blown off in the middle of a fight in the background and it's not a big deal because it is war and characters need to die that way. You're not going to want to do it to a main cast member. Um, so I think Scott is a good con contender for that. Why I think he might not die this season is because they've already killed off a bunch of Alexandrians. Almost all of the Alexandrians, keep in mind, Alexandria, the Alexandria safe zone was introduced in season five. So all the, out of all the Alexandrias, Alexandrians introduced in season five, there's only a handful of them that are still alive. Um, they really wiped them out in the show. They, most of them are dead. The only ones that are still alive, there's Scott, Tobin, Enid, there's the redhead, her husband, and I, I can't think of any more off the top of my head. I know there's a couple more. Some of them just disappeared from existence and haven't been seen for a couple of years. So I don't know if they just got written out of the show or if they died off screen, if they're still alive. But we only have like five or six that really do anything. And, you know, they already killed off Francine. They killed off Eric. So um, I feel like there, there needs to be a few at least one or two from characters from Alexandria that were introduced in season five because Alexandria was introduced in season five there needs to be at least one or two that make it to a new beginning because I just think it's more realistic I just think it's nice to have a familiar character even if we don't know them very well I mean obviously we know Aaron and Enid but we need an Alexandria and that is still alive in a new beginning um, I would love if I would love for it to be Tobin. Tobin would be great. Um, but if not Tobin, then Scott. Um, it's got to be someone besides Aaron and Enid. For one thing, it's just kind of nice and realistic to have a familiar face around years later for the New Beginning storyline. And because there is a dramatic, dramatic series of deaths that occur during the New Beginning storyline when Alpha decapitates a bunch of characters and puts their heads on spikes. Whereas there's 12 heads, 12 heads on spikes. And in the comics, it's a few main characters and then a few background characters that we only saw a few times. Scott would fit the bill for that. So I think that Scott, if Scott manages to survive season eight, he will definitely be one of the heads on spikes. He is not making it to the Whisperer War. Those are his only two, two options. He dies in the back half of All Out War as just an, a casualty of war or he's one of the heads on spikes, I would say in the middle of season nine. Season nine, episode eight, will be when the heads on spikes happen. Scott could be one of the heads. It's either he's one of the heads on spikes or he dies in the back half of All Out War. So, given that, I say his chances of dying this season in the back half are five out of 10. So one half, 50-50, like I said. All right, so next up we have Morgan, another bald black guy. However, unlike Scott, he is a little more important. But with Morgan, um, I'm still a little scared. I'm just, <laughs> uh, the thing about Morgan is that I really, really, really like the character. He's one of my favorites. He's been one of my favorites for a while now. I was very excited when he came back to season five and I am happy that he has made it this long at least. Um, I do believe that his story is not over. I do not want them to kill him off. And this show with my favorite characters, holy fuck, this show kills my favorite characters. I, I remember in, in season five, my favorite characters were like Beth and Tyrese and Bob and Abraham, and then they all died. And I mean, I always like Glenn. I mean, Glenn, Glenn, you know, he lasted a good while but you know of course Daryl had to punch Negan in the face because you know you can't have me like someone that lives for forever they, they gotta die um, I really like Sasha Abraham Abraham's my favorite character in all of TV and Abraham died and a lot of the characters I don't care about that much they're the ones that seem to live forever I'm not the biggest Daryl fan but whatever I just kind of, I don't know, I kind of wish that there was a mixture, you know, I want at least one or two of my favorite characters to make it. At least one. At least one. And Morgan is the last one left. A lot of the new characters that have been introduced the past couple of, of years, 
I just don't feel anything for. I, I, I just don't. Um, I just don't, I don't really care about anyone except for Morgan. Um, I care about some characters a little bit. Um, but really, the last character I really like that's left is Morgan, and I do not want him to die. And that is why I am still a little terrified, just because this show is obsessed with killing my favorite characters. If I really like someone, holy shit, this show goes out of its way. It's, it's like a hired assassin. It specifically targets the characters that I like. Um, and I, I really like Morgan, and I have always really liked Morgan. I just think he's a badass. Some people bitch that you know he didn't want to kill people, but I kind of understand um, where he was coming from. And I, I, t I kept telling people, it's just character development. He will eventually get to where he kills people, and here we are. He's uh, like he, he he had that one episode where he was the TI eight hundred from the Terminator or whatever the fuck. He killed hundreds of saviors. He, he's a badass and he's interesting, and I I like how he's kind of crazy and he's he's the original. He's the original black guy, man. He's the original black guy. He was in the first episode, you know, black guys in The Walking Dead. They don't usually live very long, and he just defied all expectations, and he's still around. And I, I really like that he, I feel like he and Rick, more than anyone else, are just like the cool originals. It would be really cool to have them still be alive at the end of the series, because I feel like, I really feel like the show started with Rick and Morgan. I mean, they were the two big, big characters in the first episode. I mean, yeah, you know, Shane ha had some moments, and, and Glenn was on the, the intercom, and there was Duane, but I think Rick and Morgan had the most dialogue in the first episode. So th there's kind of that, that special thing about those two characters and the fact that they're still alive. Um, you know, at, at the end of season seven, they were back-to-back -back killing saviors. You know, they were kind of honoring that the fact that they were the first characters in the first episode and they're the only ones that are left. Literally, I mean, with Carl's death, uh, the season one characters are running out fast. I think, yeah, with Carl being dead, Rick and Morgan are the last characters left from the first episode. Daryl and Carol weren't in the first episode. I know Daryl wasn't, so it really is just Rick and Morgan left from the very beginning of the series, and I think that's kind of cool. And um, I wish that Rick and Morgan had more scenes together. They had some scenes, some scenes in season six, but not a lot since then. Um, I do believe that it's possible that uh, they might get some more scenes, but I, I really like Morgan and Carol's relationship. And th the thing about him dying is that I know that um, it's pretty much been confirmed that he that he will survive because Fear the Walking Dead, the new season will take place after All Out War, but I still don't know for sure. You know, I, I'm not going to completely uh, just like have a sigh of relief until season eight literally ends and Morgan is still alive. I think it's looking pretty good for him. It's looking pretty good. Morgan will probably survive All Out War. I think it's looking pretty good for him. I do believe his story's not over. I, um, I think he, he still has some more soul searching to do. He's really messed up in the head right now just because he he went to just he's he went to kill mode. He just wants to kill off everyone and slaughter all the saviors and kill everyone and I think that um it, it would be too early to kill him. He he still has to do some soul some soul searching and I believe that he will eventually go back to the old Morgan that wants to uh, do the right thing and save people. I think that's the story that he is getting. I think that's the direction that his character is heading in. So I also believe that for him to travel to Fear the Walking Dead, that might be what the helicopter is for. Rem remember, we saw the helicopter. So I do believe that Morgan has a pretty good chance of surviving the season. I just don't know 100% for sure. I'm still a little scared of him dying. So I say his chances of dying in this season are 1 in 10. All right, next we have Judith. Okay, so this one is pretty obvious. I do not believe that she will die. I believe with Carl's death, she is the big symbol of hope. She, she is just the big final uh, sim symbol of of, you know, a future for the world with Carl's death. Um, I think that um, Carl will have some final words with her 
and I with Carl with Carl being dead, you know, she's she's the big you know, she's she's a Grimes, she's a part of the Grimes family and I think that there's there's several things they could do with her. You know, they could have like season 20 and she's the main character of the show. You know, I do believe that one way or another she will be the future of The Walking Dead. Um Maybe just the symbol of hope. Maybe she's never a big character on her own. I mean, she's, what, one or two years old right now? So when they do the time jump, she'll be four or five. You know, she'll have lines of dialogue. And if, if they keep traveling time, I mean, what they should do is just keep the actress. You know, have there be a four or five-year-old and keep the actress. If she does a good job, just have time go by with the show. And in season 12 or 13, she'll be, like nine or ten years old and from there you can make her a really interesting character if they get a really really good actress that that's a child um she could just grow up and be this interesting character kind of like the daughter in Mad Men they could get an actress like that and eventually they could have a spinoff with her or something but um there's a part in the trailer where C Carl says my mom told me that I would beat this world you will I think Carl is saying that to Judith. Carl is believing that Judith is the one that will survive and she will be the one that lives on and she she won't die. Um I, I she will be one of those characters that's still alive in season twenty, whatever the fuck they do. Um she is not going anywhere. Her chances of dying in the back half of season eight are zero out of ten. Okay, so next up we have Laura. So we saw in the last episode, in episode 8, that Laura found out that Dwight is a double agent. The reason that I think she has a very high probability of dying is because in the trailer, we saw that Dwight is with Simon. So somehow or another, Dwight finds a way to get back into his cover, to go back to the saviors. So Dwight is going to review, to, um, what's the word? resume his double agent thing he's going to continue to work for Nian, pretend that he's working for Nian, you know and pretend to be a part of the saviors so for laura there's only two options they kill laura dwight finds laura and kills her or someone else from rick's group they find her maybe daryl they find her kill her um or they capture her and they convince her to not say anything and you know, maybe Laura is convinced to join their side. Maybe Laura becomes a good guy. Um, that'd be kind of cool. I know a lot of people want Gavin to become a good guy, but I like Laura more than Gavin. Gavin just seems like kind of a bitch. I don't know, something about him. I just don't like him that much. I know a lot of people like him and want him to become a good guy, but I don't know. If, if someone's going to become a good guy besides Dwight, I'd like it to be Laura just because, I don't know. She, 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 I think she's more interesting than Gavin, and she is definitely a character I would like to see live more. And there is no way that you know she's gonna just you know be a savior and keep her mouth shut and, and be like, no, Dwight, don't do that again. You know, they either have to kill her or they capture her or they convince her to join them. Um, I, I think she's probably just going to die. I think they're probably Rick, Daryl, Dwight. Someone is going to go after her and kill her so Dwight can resume his cover. In the trailer, we saw the characters outside a lot. They're running around outside. Daryl's by a swamp. So this could be them looking for Laura. We know that the characters travel to the hilltop. So maybe during this travel, they look for Laura. They have a few characters split up and go out looking for Laura, and then someone kills Laura. So Dwight is able to resume his cover. I think this is the most likely scenario. I think that Laura will most definitely die. So I would say her chances of dying are 9 out of 10. All right, next up we have Negan. Um, this one is pretty obvious. I don't think that they will do anything differently from the comics. It's, Negan is one, a character that they will... They have copied and pasted comic Negan every chance they get. His introduction with Lucille, him killing Glenn... His dialogue, it was literally straight from the comics. Paragraphs and paragraphs, and every word was right from the comics. 
Um, there's a big exception, which is fuck. You know, Negan can't say fuck in the show because of AMC being a bunch of bitches. But besides that, everything that Negan has said and done has pretty much been ripped straight from the comics. So why would they kill him at the end of season 8? All of a sudden, why would they do something different when they've already killed off Andrea, they've already killed off Carl, there's not a lot of comic characters left to do their comic story justifiably after All Out War. They kind of need Negan to be alive. Now, I like comic Negan more than TV Negan. In fact, I like comic Negan a lot more than TV Negan. I think that he just works. I think the writers try too hard to put comic Negan into the show rather than have him be a TV character that works for being a TV character. Like every other character that are pretty much different from the comics and work as TV format characters. With Negan, they thought, let's just rip him straight from the comics. But since they're doing that, they are going to continue to do that. At the very least, they will keep him alive just because he is so popular. Just because they, they, they keep having Rick say, I'm going to kill Negan. Negan's going to die. I'm going to kill Negan. You're going to die, Negan. I'm going to kill you, Negan. You know, just over and over and over and over and over again. They're really trying to, to convince the audience, Rick's going to kill Negan because he keeps talking about it. And then at the end of the season, oh. <gasps> Rick didn't kill Negan because um, I think that's what that he Rick's honoring Carl. You know, we we saw that moment in the beginning of the season where Rick is his eyes are red and he's saying let mercy prevail over wrath, um, and that's what Carl's talking about. You know, stop killing, don't don't kill. We can get things back to the way they were when we weren't killing all the time. That will be the big moment that leads to Rick deciding to spare Negan's life. He will slice a part of Negan's throat. Um, Negan will, I, I would really like to see that, um, that whole part in the comics where, where Rick really does convince Negan that Negan is wrong, that Negan needs to change his ways, and then Rick slashes Negan's throat, and then Dr. Carson has to save him, and then Negan gets logged up. I even want Rick to tell him, you're fucked, you're gonna die an old man, because that's, that's straight from the comics, and I really want Andrew Lakin to say that in his dramatic way. Um, yeah, Negan's not going anywhere. He is going to continue to get um, the rest of his comic material. He is pretty much the second biggest cash cow of the franchise but behind only the great Daryl. Um, he's not going anywhere. If they want to kill him, they're probably going to kill him in a few years because that's the only time that the fans would be even remotely okay with it. The Negan fans are really crazy. They do not want Negan to die this early. And I can kind of understand that. I mean, he does have a lot more to do in the comics. And so far, his story has been like the comics. So the only logical, the only logical conclusion is that he will not die. And that he will survive all out war like he does in the comics. So for Negan, I say his chances of dying in the back half are 1 out of 10. Okay. Next up, and the last one for this video, will be Terra. Terra is a little difficult. Um, I just don't know. Um, I mean, she's been alive since season four. This is her fifth year. I, I don't know. Um, I, I want to say that she lives. I want to say that she makes it. I like her character. Um, but I don't know. I... I believe that she might die. I believe it's possible. I also believe that she doesn't have to die. Um, if she does make it, her last season will probably be season 9. I believe that she is a good option for one of the heads on spikes. Or she could be one of the casualties during the Whisperer War. Um, she could survive season 8. She could survive season 9. She she's probably not going to survive season ten. She would probably die by then. At that point, um, she's going to die eventually. It, when and how, with the story they're giving her, I don't know if the writers have enough time to conclude Tara's character development because right now she's hot, red hot pissed. I mean she is hot, um, but she's red hot pissed. She is she still has a lot of bloodlust. She's still very angry over the, Denise Cloyd's death. Um, she's not having any morally pure character development, any morally pure lines of dialogue. They could, um, kind of 
I mean, it, they still have eight episodes left, so they could give Tara a lot of morally pure lines of dialogue and character development, especially if some of the episodes are an hour long. They could definitely rush Tara to that morally pure character development, morally pure lines of dialogue, and then kill her, because that's what they do with the characters. Um, the second Tara goes morally pure, she is going to die. But as long as she's angry and has bloodlust and wants revenge and wants to avenge Denise's death, that will be what keeps her character going. That'll be what keeps her alive. The second that diminishes, she's a goner. And from what we've seen in the trailer, she still has a lot of anger left. Her anger is literally the factor that will keep her alive. It will decide when she will die, whether it will be season 8, season 9, or season 10. Season 9 will be several, several years later, so she might have calmed down by then. But in the trailer, like I said, it, 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 she looks like she's still got a lot of anger. And she points a gun at Dwight, so she wants to kill Dwight for the 87th time. So with Tara, how long she lives really just determines on how long she's angry and wants revenge. Once she stops doing that and starts doing the right thing and being funny, goofy Tara again, I think that's what she'll, that's the moment where she will get killed. Another thing that will keep her alive will be her relationship with Cindy. I believe that Tara and Cindy will reunite uh, at least once before Tara's death. I, I think that they kind of, they kind of had that relationship for a reason. Um, Cindy kept saving Tara's life and they had that character development together and got to know each other for a reason. I believe that their characters will reunite at least one more time before Tara's death. So we know that the Ocean Side will have some involvement in this season. I don't know if they'll fight. So Cindy and Tara might not reunite this season. So if they don't reunite, Tara will not die. If they reunite in season 9, Tara will probably die. So that's another factor. When Tara starts doing the right thing again and she reunites with Cindy, she will die. That will be when she gets killed. However, I don't know if that will happen in the back half. It, is there enough time in, the, in eight episodes to do all of that? Um, I don't know. So I think that I'm leaning towards she lives. I'm leaning towards that, but barely. I would say that her chances of dying in the back half are four out of ten. Anyway guys, those are my characters for this video. Um, come back again for part two. I will be doing even more characters in a random order and we will eventually cover every character's chance of dying. I am uploading a new part every day, so please stay tuned for part two. And as always, don't be shy. Hit that like and subscribe. I'm not going anywhere. Um, we are at 40 subscribers right now. My first goal is 250. So if you could please, please hit that subscribe button or tell someone else to hit that subscribe button or just beg your family members to hit the subscribe button. I just, I need all the subscribers possible. And I really appreciate everyone's support. Uh, we're almost a fifth of the way there, guys. So please help me get to 250. Anyway, I'm Spencer Rhodes and I will see you guys later. Bye.